Hi everyone, Andre from Chromafix Films here, and this is part 4 of my 2D Unity game development tutorial series. This video is part 2 of my character controllers tutorial, and in the last video I covered the basic functionality of a player, so now our player can move and jump and he's animated. So now we're going to add a couple trigger events so we can attack or open doors. So let's jump right in. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to load up this wall. I built this wall just a few minutes ago. And all this is is just uh, a tile. Um, it's a sprite that I downloaded from another um, art package that I uh, mentioned in a previous video. And it just has a standard collider on it. I 2D glider, sorry, and we're going to make this wall disappear when we open it. So if we select the player, we can double click and open up this move script. So this is what we have here. We need to make it so when you press a button, the player has an action or does something. So let's add a new variable here. And this is going to be attack button. So now we can assign that to, uh, in the inspector, to whatever from the input list we want. So this is helpful when we're trying to customize the controls later. And we're going to create a hitbox. The hitbox is actually going to be a game object in the scene, so we're going to assign it through the uh, inspector. And now we're going to have to create a new if statement. Get key down, attack button. We're going to make the script initiate a new function that we're going to create here. So let's create it right here. There we go. And we're going to say when the player attacks, we want that hitbox. Uh, it's 2D Collider to enable wait a small fraction of a second and then disable it. So let's save it and now let's go into the inspector and let's assign the variable. So let's create a hitbox. Game object create empty, call it hitbox, and add a 2D collider. And we're going to make this a trigger. This is so the object doesn't actually interact with the objects in a uh, physics state, but uh, as a trigger so it can pass through any objects with a collider, just ignores it. So there you go. Let's make it a child object of player. And Assign it the variable hitbox. I just created this, so you won't have this, but all you have to do is again click add tag and type in hitbox. All right, save it. Now assign that to the variable, and we're going to disable the collider. So, because we did get key down and not get button down, we can only assign a key on our keyboard. So, let's assign it or a uh, mouse button. Let's assign it to mouse zero. And there you go. If you can see up here where I'm uh, selecting, you can see very quickly, very briefly, or you may not be able to because of the uh, frame rate of which this video is recording at. If you click, you can see it's appearing very quickly and it's disappearing. That's all we need. So whatever object comes in contact with this, when we click, uh, we can assign it in the script and say, do something when that happens. So if that trigger is inside of another trigger, let's say if it's a door, it will unlock the door and you can check if you have a key or not. And that's something that we'll go over in the objectives video. That's a, another tutorial down the line. And uh, when it's an enemy, we can uh, apply damage. So now let's give the player the ability to open doors and unlock them. So we're going to assume that we have a key. 
So we're going to select this wall object. Uh, you can make this wall uh, however you would like. You can just have it as a uh, game object, 3D object, or sorry, 2D object. And you can just import your own sprite and then uh, add a 2D box collider on that. But this is what I have here. So let's, uh, let's go with this. So let's create a new tag. We're going to call this door one. And we're going to assign it. And we're going to create this trigger here. So we're going to change the box collider 2D to a trigger. So now the player can pass through it. But then on the second child object, we're going to create another collider, which is slightly thinner than the first one. And that way, we should be able to also activate the trigger but not be able to pass through the object. And this collider does not have to be tagged. So let's go to our script now. Down here we have on collision enter. We're going to create a new function which is on trigger enter. See if I get any errors. Nope, that should be it. So now we're going to say if the object has a tag, let's see, is um, door one, then we're going to do something. Let's say other. Oh, we're going to do a destroy here, destroy function. So we're going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to take this and I'm going to delete it here, but we're going to create another script. So let's right click in here, create a new JavaScript. We're going to call it hitbox. So we're going to drag and drop this onto the hitbox object. And we're going to open it up, save. And we'll get rid of this, but we'll keep this. Okay, so now this makes sense. So now if that hitbox object is colliding with the door, it should work. Should disappear. Let's try it. Oh, it's not working. Okay, why not? So I figured it out. It's not compare tag. It's just tag. I don't know why I thought compare tag. I believe that it works with the 3D settings, uh, but not 2D. So now if we play it, he can hop over to the door, and if we click, the door opens. All right, so that's the extremely basic functionality of a player, but we can keep adding on to this as we add uh, game objectives. And we can add more to the player, uh, possibly add in a little arm that swings whenever you attack. And you can do that the same way that we did the uh, animator in the last video. So the same way he moves his feet is the same way we can have him attack. And I'll keep adding details as we go along, but in the next video we'll be covering some level design. So we'll set it up for the objectives video where we can have a lot more going on in the scene and we'll have some more fun with this. So thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.